Dan Ullman, Matt Bernie are taking a look at race number 10 at Oaklawn Park on Saturday. It's the grade two $750,000 Oaklawn handicap and our coverage is presented by DRF Bets. Sign up for a new DRF Bets account. Access a $150 sign up bonus. Start punching away. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. The promo code is TV150. And as we take a look at the field, Matt, the West Coast is invading. They are sending Accelerate, who has very quietly become one of the top older horses in the country. Yeah, absolutely. The winner of the Big Cap most recently with a 110 buyer speed figure. You know, his 2018 so far has been sparkling. He's two for two, and he's put up big performances in each race, including the start two back in San Pasquale, where, okay, he may have been a little bit aided by an inside bias, but the trip was, was not ideal going into the backside when he had to check and steady out of a bit of a tight quarter and then he finally ended up getting through it all worked out for him if he runs the big cap he's probably going to win i guess the question becomes do you think the wet track moved him up significantly on the wet track on the uh do you think he moved up significantly on the wet track is what i'm trying to say and if that's the case does a low 100 buyer still get the job done or is he going to need to run the 110 to win? I guess there's a chance that there'll be some residual moisture in the Oaklawn main track on Saturday. We're expecting it to rain for Friday's Apple Blossom card. An argument could be made that Accelerate is a little bit dressed up off of his last two wins. You mentioned the San Pasquale uh, and maybe the trip in the early part wasn't great but the rail opened up turning into the stretch and he shot on through on a day when the inside seemed very good. And in the big cap he just sat second off of a rack rather slow pace over a wet track in not the strongest big cap field in the world. So if you do want to poke holes and accelerate, you can. But I also think there are going to be a lot of handicappers out there that say he's the best horse, he's more comfortable at this mile and an eighth, and even at the big cap's mile and a quarter distance. He's very versatile. He doesn't need to be up close to the pace. He can uh, pretty much adapt to any kind of pace scenario. And as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, they've got to accelerate a little bit farther back, and that could be good considering the red bar indicates a fast pace will be set by fellow Southern California invader City of Light. Yeah, and City of Light is, is a bit of an X factor in here, a bit of an unknown. First time going to stretch out to two turns, and not just two turns, but out to nine furlongs. From that outside draw, I kind of feel like Drayden Van Dyke has to go. I, I don't know if you want to sit and try to get two, two turns for the first time. You don't want to be giving up too much ground. I think they're aggressive and they send. The question is, do you send to get to position and then have a horse like Hedge Fund go and be content to press him and think that you're just more talented? Or are you of the opinion that you just got to send to clear to the front? The problem is if you go too fast, stretching out to nine furlongs, uh, you're going to be tired at the end of the race or what? He's very classy, obviously. He's a multiple grade one stakes winner. He showed a dimension in sitting just off the pace last time out. I think Van Dyke is on a send from the gate. If Hedge Fund and Florent Giroux want the lead, well, City of Light will try to sit off of it. The distance, though, I think is the big X factor here. He's by quality road. That's not a big issue with a mile and an eighth. Lot of speed, though, on the bottom of this pedigree. Could be a big test for City of Light at a relatively short price. He's three to one on the morning line. Getting to Hedge Fund, there were some folks that just thought, he was a Gulfstream wonder, a typical Pletcher Gulfstream wonder when he won his seasonal debut off of a very long layoff. I thought he took advantage of an intensely inside speed favoring track, but what the heck do I know? He came right back and he won the Essex with a career best effort. This horse could be getting good at the right time for Pletcher. Yeah, the Essex was a little bit of an odd effort because it looked like he was in deep water on the far turn. He was all out and he rebroke and he finished. He actually extended away from the stretch, from the field down the stretch. Um, I, I don't know. I, I like this horse, I think, more than most people as a three-year-old. And I understand that he didn't really live up to the billing and he didn't live up to the hype. And then he was gone for a long time. Maybe he's still not as good as I thought he was going to be. But if the 103 is any indication and then he could be moving forward, he's interesting. The question now also becomes he's never sat off of a horse and won a race. If all of a sudden City of Light clears him and he's got to do something he's never done before at nine furlongs, I don't know if I love the proposition of that. I want Florent Giroux to make Drayden Van Dyke make a decision. You're either going to try to clear us or you're going to sit because I think the mile and an eighth is not a problem for this horse. Let's say Hedge Fund and City of Light hook up. Let's say the red bar of the time form U.S. pace projector is correct and the pace is fast. Isn't that the perfect storm for Hawakam, who won the Razorback handicap at Oaklawn last time out? I know it was over a wet track. I know it was a Corey Lannery special where he just scraped the paint every step of the way and had the perfect trip. 
but a fast pace on a horse that's run two good races in 2018 at a distance that should make him comfortable, boy, that would make 10 to 1 look pretty good. Absolutely, and you you bring up the sort of fast pace that he had in, in the perfect Corey Lannery ride. It was also on an inside day where you really wanted to be down on the rail. At the same time, this isn't a horse that that was a sort of a one-off. He, he's run really big races in the past as well. We know that Oaklawn is going to be friendly for him. He's four or five in the exact. Uh, if you're right, if they throw it down early, this could be the perfect kind of horse that is probably. He's never really been respected on the on the top board. Let's be honest. At what point has he ever been anything less than five to one? He always gets overlooked. And more often than not, he comes with a pretty honest effort. If they throw it down early, I would expect him to be running late. We haven't talked about the defending Oaklawn handicap winner yet, and that's the number eight inside straight. No disrespect to Midnight Storm. This year's Oaklawn handicap looks a little bit saltier. Inside straight, very quietly getting back into form for Robertino Diodoro. He's won two of his last three at Turf Paradise, but in slow time. Yeah, and that's the biggest concern at this point. Is is he quite as good as he was in the past? Then even his best form when he was winning a race like this last year, I just don't think that's good enough to win this year. I think you're going to need something in that low 100 range. Untrapped was second in the Essex. He had some traffic trouble in that race. But at the end of the day, isn't he just untrapped? A horse that isn't the most trustworthy in the world. I know he won the Oklahoma Derby at this mile in an eighth distance. But I still think that you and I feel he's a little bit better at shorter distances. He's got good tactical speed he'll be in the second flight he'll probably be punching along right there at about the 316th pole I don't trust him to win though I like him underneath yeah I, I agree right now he's an underneath kind of horse eight times second or third from 14 lifetime starts I think he's better at a mile or a mile and a 16th I suppose if you believe the trajectory, he continues to improve, but there's just a part of me that doesn't think that he's quite this good at this distance. We talked about Hawakam really benefiting if this race goes to deep closers, but he is not the only deep closer in the race by a long shot. We've got a Kentucky Derby runner-up in this field, the number two looking at Lee. And maybe you could say looking at Lee's a little bit dirtied up. His most recent race, he caught a slow pace. He really wasn't able to rally into it. The time before that was his first start since the Travers. The time before that, he's 30 to 1 against West Coast in the Travers. If he runs his West Virginia Derby, is it good enough to win? He got beat by Colonel's Dark Temper that day, who's in this race. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Yeah, I've always liked this horse. I think he's honest, but I, he's not that fast. And when you're a one-run closer, you need to be significantly better than everyone else. Even if there's a crazy pace scenario and there's a meltdown, isn't Hawakam just more talented than looking at Lee? And I guess that's the way I'm looking at it. If I have a horse coming from off of it, I would prefer Hawakam. As much as I like looking at Lee, he's yet to run all that fast. Sonneteer was 7-2 to two against Hawakam in the Razorback, got a wet track that he absolutely adores, and for one reason or another, just didn't fire. If you can find a way to throw that race out, you're left with the 96 buyer, a rallying effort in the fifth season. He's 20-1 to one on the morning line for the talented Keith DeZormo. Can you throw out the Razorback? I mean, you've got to be very, very kind. Now, I suppose, again, that was on a day that inside was good, and he wasn't that close to the inside, so maybe you've got the built-in excuse there. But at the same time, he never picked his feet up. And like you may mention, that was over a track that he would, under normal circumstances, adore. That run two starts back that at least gives him a puncher's chance, and maybe he can hit the board. I don't like him as far as a win contender is concerned. Blue Ridge Traveler found a weak field to notch his first stakes win. That was the Maxim Gold Cup two starts back. Then he got wired by Hedge Fund last time out in the Essex Handicap. He might get a better pace scenario this time around. I don't think we've seen his best. I think it's interesting that Kenny McPeak's putting the blinkers on. Yeah, hopefully that gets him into the run a little bit earlier so he's not coming from dead last, where he's not running with the horses like looking at Lee, and we always talked about Hawakam. If he can sit sort of in that mid-pack flight, and if they do throw it down early, I don't think stamina is going to be a concern with this horse. I think the mile and eight is actually beneficial for him. If they go fast early, he could be running late. Colonel's Dark Temper was an underrated second-tier three-year-old for Jinx Fires last year. Good to see him win the Grade 3 West Virginia Derby. Looked like he was getting tired towards the end of the year. He came back off a long layoff as an odds-on favorite. Don't like that he showed up with front wraps that day. And although it was a long layoff, I thought for that class of horse it was a weak field. I was disappointed that he didn't get the job done or at least show a little more. Yeah, agreed. He ran second in that spot. The third and fourth place finishers have come back and earned 74 and 70 buyers. I know he was two lengths clear of third, but that's simply not fast enough, and he's going to need to run the race of his life to even hit the board.
Malibu Max completes the field. All he's done is win his last two races with buyer speed figures of 88 and 94. He's got some tactical speed. Uh, he's taken a big step up in class. Yeah, another one that's just a little bit slow on paper, going to need to run the race of his life if he's going to hit the board. If you think you can beat Accelerate, it's an interesting betting race. As we put our picks up, I think Accelerate is all of a sudden kind of muscled up and become one of the better older horses in the country. I like that he's adaptable. I like him turning back to a mile and an eighth. He's going to be my rather uninteresting pick in this race. You're going with Hedge Fund. Is he dissuading City of Light early? Is it as simple as that? Is he going to sit? What are we getting from, a, from Hedge Fund from a tactical standpoint? I'm I'm really concerned that City of Light is going to be intent on going to the front, and now Hedge Fund's going to need to do something that he's never done in his career, and that's sit off of a horse. At the same time, that's why I would like Florent Giroux to be aggressive and make Drayden Van Dyke have to make a decision. Stretching out from nine, from seven to nine furlongs is not an easy thing to do, no matter how talented a horse like City of Light is. Hedge Fund, the distance isn't the problem. The question is, is he this good, truly, against better company, and... Does he have the ability to switch off if need be? He went fast in that last race. I want Flo to go. Make Drayden Van Dyke make a decision. And if, you know what, if you lose on the square, you lose on the square. But at least be in a position to take advantage. Four to one on the morning line for hedge fund. Give me numbers. I'm going to go 7, 10, 11, 4. I think Accelerate's going to do it one more time. 10, 11, 7, and 5 for me in the grade two Oaklawn handicap. Again, if you're playing the race from home, if you're playing the card from home, no better place than with DRF Bets. You know the drill. $150 bonus when you sign up for a new DRF Bets account at drf.com forward slash join. Please use the promo code TV150. Approximate post time for the Oaklawn Handicap, 540 Central. Best of luck.